Dave here, how are you? Today I'm going to continue on from the previous video I did on the UJK path guide system. Now, it won't be featured much in this video, I'm going to take you further on as to what you can do. And I've started creating this very, very, very handy little bench top. Now you can use this, you, when I finished it, you'll be able to use something like this, you could make one yourself, that you can use inside a house put it on a kitchen table, you're not going to scratch anything, you can put it on a dining room table, it'll still be fine. You can take it with you to site, you can take it apart and slide it under a bed, under a couch. It is so, so easy and very, very handy. Stick with me and I'll take you through it. Here we go. Now you may also notice that I haven't dog holed the whole board because I don't want to drop screws and things down there, so I'm going to do some interesting things with this. Now the board that I'm using for this is three quarter inch hoop pine plywood, close enough to 19 millimeters thick. It's nine ply. Pretty stable and I purchased this board as a quarter sheet. Now there was an advantage for me to do that because someone else has come into the uh, plywood supplier and said can you cut me up this, that and the other and they've had some offcuts left over. So check first. Walk in, say I'm after a quarter sheet, do you have any offcuts or something very close to a quarter sheet? And you'll buy at a whole lot cheaper than a full sheet square meter rate. I'll utilize a whole lot of the Festool accessories and other people's accessories. So I'm going to put some anti-slip strips in it. I'm going to put a T-track in it, the legs, and clean it up and we'll have a ball. Here we go. You've all seen me get to this stage before if you've watched the previous video. Now here's where we're going to take it beyond there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put brass inserts. Now these little brass insert nuts have a 5 16 thread down the, down the inside. I'm using the 5 16 because I'm going to use these guys as the legs. They're non-slip, got a 5 16 thread at the end there and they go into there. See that? They go into there perfectly. These guys require a half inch hole to be drilled and the thread cuts into the ply. Now there's a couple of ways you can drive these in. You can use either a screwdriver or a bolt. I'll show you how to do it. What I've got here is a portable drill guide. 3 8 chuck there and it locks onto a pair of arms that guides it to whatever angle I set it up down here at. This is a half inch cutter. See there, half inch. I'm going to set the depth so we don't go all the way through. There's the depth stop here, about there. I found the best places to put these were in between the last two at either corner, so there, and also dead center either side. So I'm going to measure those distances now and get it right. So I've got 76 millimeters between the outsides of the hole, the closest side, so I need to come in 38 millimeters, which is that. Now this isn't going to be terribly orthodox, I'm going to use Peter's drill as a center punch. Done. Because it looks really good. Magic. Does a great job. Put the drill on it. There we go. That kind of speed looks okay to me. We'll slide the drill down to the Gotcha. Let's have a look at this one. Straight down. Now, what are the exits like? Not too bad. Not too bad. I popped a washer on there that is larger than the insert. So as it's going down into that half inch hole, it's going to stop at the top. It won't bury it all the way and you know go right through the other side and I think how the hell am I going to stop it? So here we go. I'll put this one in over there. Back her out. How nice is that? That's lovely. It's such a buzz. I love this kind of stuff. Here's a tip. I was just thinking about this. Please, whatever you do, do not do not 
try and tighten this up or put this into the bolt using the drill. Because if it grabs, that is very sharp. It will cut your fingers open and you will be so unhappy. Here we go. Now all that's done. I was going to chamfer the top of each of these holes, but I decided not to because I realized that all of the dogs that I use have already got a chamfer on the end. So they go in very easily. There's no, there's no problem with that. You know, in they go and it's done. You wanna see the legs on? Let's do that. I'll flip her upside down. I've got a head start on everyone. I've waxed this side. That's how the other side's gonna come up in a minute. Let's put the legs on. Now these legs are bench cookies. Now it's a bench cookie, does not slide, won't slip. These are risers that screw straight into them. So I'm going that way up, doesn't really matter which way I go. In it goes. They normally come in packs of four if you're interested in getting them. I'll see if I can put a link in the description box down the bottom for you. Now the only reason, the only reason I've got my backing board here at the moment is because when you're drilling through plywood or MDF, it's always good to have a backing board there to drill into and then you don't get as much tear out. You get very little. This is the underside of my board and there's, there's minimal tear out there. It's, it's come up really well. Here we go. Let's stand her up. How is that? That is substantial. It's very solid. It's not going to slide. That is actually my backing board. Look at that. It's pushing the backing board. It's got a hold of it. So there we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recess this track in around about there. I think that is going to be quite handy for us. I want to keep it to one side or the other. It doesn't matter if it's this side or that side. It's a symmetrical top. So remember I told you how to set a, to zero a router cutter and to set the depth if I want to. First of all, I'm going to zero the router straight away. We'll release that. I'm going to plunge it all the way until it hits, then release the clamp. Now it's locked at full, at dead level with my base plate. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'll come around this side, it might be easier. This is the turret that I'm using. So I'll swing this around and I'll drop that down to there. So now I'm gonna get the piece of track. I'm going to raise this up, the depth stop onto the turret. I'm going to put this in there and drop it onto it and tighten it up. That's it. So now I can plunge and the bottom of the plunge will be the depth of that. All right. Now I can utilize, I can guess, I can, I can go down in, in graduations, but the last one, as I say, at full depth will be there and you'll find That is the, exactly the right depth. All right, now I can come back up. So I can stand the router up out of the way. Pop this down. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a straight edge and clamp it on. Now you can use a piece of timber with a couple of clamps. That's fine. I'm going to use one of my Festool tracks. Even though this is not a Festool router, I can still use it. And I've got the rapid clamping system, which means it's going to hook on over either end and I will set it up with the center as to where I want to cut. And go on. Notice I'm not going the full depth. We're gonna go out the end a little bit. Let's have a look at the depth. That's going to be a really, really nice fit. That's nice and tight. 
fits in there beautifully. I'm not going to drive it all the way down at the moment. What I will do is I'll go along with a block of wood and give it a tap and then I'll screw it in. But now I'm going to put a couple of anti-slip tracks in there. I'm going to use a little bit of this anti-slip material that is designed to go underneath Festool tracks. So it's pretty handy stuff. It works very well with the tracks. I can't see why it won't work on the top. Now that will be instead of using a router mat, I should be able to put things on here and it won't slide around. I don't want it to have any lift. It's about three millimeters thick, maybe slightly less, and it does compress pretty well. So I'm going to recess it in two millimeters using the same cutter as I did for the track. And you can see it's exactly the same width as the track. So it's pretty handy. I might do two runs with it. We'll see how we go. going to go in there very well and it will flatten down beautiful that's not looking too bad is it this is where we're up to so far I've got the slots cut out for the anti-slip tape I've got the slot cut out for the t-track I've got the inserts in for the legs and now I'm going to sand the whole thing I'll take this out first how nice is that it's not bad, so I'm going to hit it with 120 to start, and then I'll do it with 180, and then we'll do the wax. Ready? What I'm going to do next is I'm going to wax the board, but I don't want wax down in these slots that I've put for the anti-slip. I don't care if wax gets into this slot, but it doesn't worry me. But these ones, it's important. I did try and get some blue tape, but I only, but I could only find some masking tape. So that is better than nothing. Now I can wax the board. Neutral wax. I'm going to go through and wax the whole board and then I'll do the edges. So I've put the wax on and now I'm going to clean it off with the ETS-5. So basically it's just a orbital sander and I've got Velives on it. Now Velives is an aluminium oxide pad and it builds up a little bit of the wax on the top of it and then it just keeps on heating it in and spreading it and it comes up like glass. Now because it's wax, I'm not getting rid of anything, nothing's going in the air, but I've got the back running anyway. I'm going to select the screws that I've got. This size here is pretty good. I throw a drill that's the right size for these screws in with the screws and just leave it there. I won't be using any uh, drill on this one because it's only a soft wood. If it was a hard wood, I would definitely use it. Pop him in. Both ends, down it goes. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I could have used a wooden block and tapped that as I went, but this will be fine. It's perfect either end. Let's put a screw in there. Go to that. Get one in the middle to start.
The other option as well is to glue the track in. But I'm fond of the mechanical bond with the screw there that's going to lock it. Right, that's all in. And as I say, the other side, the screws are all pushing through at the moment. So what I might do is undo the legs, put them on this side, because did you know we can flip her over and we screw the legs in the other side as well? And I'll show you what I mean. I can use this upside down or the right way. It makes no difference. I'm gonna give him a little nip with this. The thing, of course, when using an angle grinder is make sure you haven't got anything flammable lying around. There's nothing there, so it's all good. I'll grab my file. Okay, what I'm doing there is I'm supporting the end of the file. So it's not digging in. Beautiful. I'm going to put this on. It's, it's a 90 degree fence to clean this off. You can see how rough that is. We'll start planning. What I'm going to do now is take the tape out and glue it or and put this self adhesive anti slip tape down. And uh, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for this part because I haven't done this before. So we'll see how it goes. I might be able to just get this started and it doesn't matter if we're right on it we can trim it there we go hmm sticky stuff and the other thing is I'm not going to stretch it as I pull it. I'm going to pull it out and let it just fall in there. I don't want it to be trying to fight itself to pull back. And what I was doing there was I was running my fingers along either side, making it curl a little bit and drop down into the track very, very nicely. So the end of a spatula on a glue brush, I could put into the slot and drag along and push down behind as I'm going. Now that will ensure anything hanging out the side is pulled in. Pull it along with this. And 
the other side. That's looking pretty fine. Nearly in the home straight. So, so far, that's what it's looking like, which is pretty good. You want to see how the grab stuff works? Piece of timber. That's 45 degrees. She's not tipping yet. Any second. That's got to be 60 degrees and it's only just starting to slide now. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, what can we put in there? What can we put in there, David? So I can put a dog there. I can put one of these underneath it to lock it in position. It's not going to go anywhere. That's got it. Rock solid. I can put another one there. To cut an ordinary piece of timber at 90 degrees, I would put it there. Have a path, path dog there. Path dog there. I don't, they don't have to be path dogs. They can be, you know, these guys that Festool sell, they go in there just as well. Now, if I want to cut a 45 degree, I leave that dog where it is, and I spin this one around to there. And then I put the piece of timber that way. Now I've got that anti slip. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Then I put the, these guys across there, and I do my cut there, and that, my friend, will be 45 degrees. It's geometry. It's working off geometry. So there we go. That's what we can do with cutting. Now what else can we do with it? We can put clamps in. So this guy here, these guys, the quick clamp, or lever clamp, whatever you want to call them. Now they will go in. Now be aware that if you try and make this top too thick, you won't be able to get the clamp in and turn. It'll catch. So there you go. It will hold plenty of things down. Okay, I'm going to go through all of the things that I know of, that I have, that I can throw onto here to hold things. That's what it's all about. It's holding shapes, regular shapes, and these things do it so, so well. Now, but I've spaced it out missing one hole, and I've spaced it out missing two holes. One hole, no holes missed. Conventional dogs. Half dogs or Festool's little dogs. These are all these are all 20 millimeter. The tall dogs that are used for all sorts of things, but mostly for stabilizing a rail as you're doing a cut with Peter's system. You can turn them upside down, put them in that way if you wish. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. They are threaded on the end. So get rid of those. Pop those out of the way. We have these guys, which are actually the legs. If you buy a few of them, you can drop them in there as well. Now these are three quarter inch, like so. so. I can put them in, put a board on top of there, and I can cut with a jigsaw. Uh, I can put cones on, and on each of them, and then I can paint. I'll leave things up here. I don't have to worry about the surface, it's waxed. Paint's not gonna stick to wax. The, these little guys, So slide that up to there and I can put a piece of timber on there and plane away. And then I could put vice. So there you go, I've got a vice locked on. This is a Irwin quick grip and you can undo the head slide it through, put the head on the other side, oh. I've been a bit cheeky and I took this cap, no sorry, I took that cap there, that cap there I took off, it's just a matter of a screwdriver under there, it's a press fit, it pops off, pulled the rivet out and then I took the bolt out which was a 5 16th and I put an 8 millimeter metric in there. So it will now go into Peter's path dogs 
And because it'll do that, I can put that under there. Done. I could put a washer under there if I wanted to. And that's locked. Now this will hold things down for me quite well. Piece of timber. Say I'm dominoing some, putting some dominoes in. It's not going anywhere. Do the domino. That, my friend, is very quick. Straight out. Trim stop. As I say. Works well. Move that out of the way. What you can also do is, if you don't have enough grab in the height with something like this, you can use one of these guys. Now you don't have to drop down into one of those holes. You could, if you had a specified job, a specific job, you could drill a series of 5 16th holes around the top wherever you needed them, and you could drop these into it. Now, if you were going to be using this without a leg, you would need to put a counterbore on the other side. 5 16th bolt in there with Loctite, cut the end off, drill a hole that's 5 16th, drop it down there, put a washer on the other side and a 5 16th lock nut, nylock lock nut on the other end. And then you'll get full, full rotation. You could put a washer on this side as well. And you could leave this sit, sat there just about forever if you wanted to. But again, it's very easy just to undo it and take it off. If you don't want to miss out on what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. It's free. You will be sent an email when I do another video. Give me a thumbs up and Check the description box below for links and keep on coming back and I shall see you next time. Bye. What do you think? That's, isn't it lovely? <laughs> see you later.